this analysis of World of Warcraft's gender binary is, in fact, based on my new gender workbook by Kate Bornstein and the ideas there within. Um, Blizzard Entertainment makes World of Warcraft, for those of you who don't know, and it's headquartered in Irvine, California. All art on this PowerPoint is from their official site or from public domain users posting screenshots. This PowerPoint will focus specifically on the gender of the player and the gender of the race, the Mogu, which are the current antagonists of the plot in World of Warcraft. This is Azeroth, the magical world where World of Warcraft takes place. There's lots of money, research, and development put into this design. Everything was painstakingly planned out ever since its inception in 2004, and now over 8 million people play this every day. Every choice of Blizzard's is supposedly on purpose, but I believe on the subject of the gender binary, they are simply not informed as to the other options, or they haven't researched the subject of gender. In World of Warcraft, you can supposedly do anything. You have amazing powers. You can be a werewolf, an elf, or a human. There's demons, magic, the undead, and in general, an amazing high fantasy world where you can do everything from raise pets to burn cities to the ground. But the second you reach the character creation screen, you are faced with the deadly gender binary. All binaries are false binaries, in the words of Kate Bornstein, and there is a lot of gray space in between. You can be anything in this game that's having to do with magic, but you have to do it while being a boy character or a girl character. Characters don't even necessarily line up with the identities of the players, as some heterosexual cisgender men play as female characters so they can ogle them throughout the game. But there should be a non-binary option here, to properly represent all of the different facets of life. And there are an infinite number of facets of life in Azeroth. On the left is the chart that players are presented with when picking a race for their character, while on the right are some races that players cannot pick. These are unpickable because they are quote-unquote single gender races. The dryad pictured in the middle of the formation on the right, the person with the half-deer body, they are all referred to in that race as she and her. On top of that, they have breasts, which many people associate with being a woman, no matter how false that may be, and they are referred to as a female-only race. This doesn't make much sense, because they don't need gender for reproduction or really anything. They grow from the earth, and they tend for the earth. This leads us to the Mogu, the antagonist race of the current expansion of World of Warcraft. Not getting into terribly nerdy turns, they're made of stone. There are the magical titans that founded the Earth of Azeroth and decided they were going to create a race called the Mogu. These Mogu are made of stone. There is no reason for them to be gendered, and they do not reproduce sexually, but only when titans make them. The butch versus femme argument that Bornstein asserts in chapter 8 of my new gender workbook says that while perhaps some robots or different kinds of fantasy creatures may seem to present as typically male or female, these could fall into the butch versus femme stereotypes. I don't believe that this is the case, with the hypersexualized female mogu performing a lot differently from the male mogu, shown as more masculine and ultimately more powerful. However, there are incredibly positive points of World of Warcraft. The genders of the characters never decide their power levels for the player, and all quests, or sometimes referred to in video game as lore, aka the story, is not affected whatsoever by the character's gender. It's almost an arbitrary choice. No quest or any kind of battle is gender specific, so it leads all of us gender outlaws to wonder why the binary exists within World of Warcraft. The easy answer for that would be the fact that people are used to it, and I think this needs to change. Another thing actually not affected by the gender binary of World of Warcraft is your character's romantic pursuits. Oddly enough, even though the gender binary rules over how your character looks and even the sounds they make during battle, it does not affect who you can marry in the game. This is a progressive point, but honestly still does not make up for the point that non-binary identities are not included in the game. 
While Bornstein says that gender does not happen in a vacuum and sexuality can influence gender and vice versa, this needs to change. Another feature that is a mix of progressive and a mix of a strange bourgeoisie, you can go from binary to binary for characters with a small payment of $25. It applies only to one character and does imply the monetary privilege to change genders. Like almost all forms of media, World of Warcraft is problematic, but it has rare benefits in terms of what the characters can and cannot do. Overall, Born C would be conflicted about this work, because it, while it portrays both binary genders as equal in every respect, it does not give that same respect to non-binary genders. On that note, there are also races that are non-human, that have been given human gender qualities that don't make any sense for them. These races are made of water, fire, and stone, and have no genitalia or means of reproduction, but somehow are still assigned the archaic human gender binary. Altogether, it is a conflicting piece of work, but with hopefully the inclusion of genders that don't fall under the male or female categories, it can improve itself and learn.